him back. Let's see if Origin respects the Bard or if Miffy has uh, trained himself in the master support ways and as a champion, but we'll see. Well, we'll find out. We did touch on some of the priority picks and bans at the top of the show, Crepo. Alistair was there, Rek'Sai was there, Gragas, Azia, Cassio, and today we've discovered Rise needs to be added to that list. Two picks, one victory. Let's see whether or not SK or Origin continue that trend. Yeah, history tends to repeat itself. Alistair banned now. Swiftly uh, followed by Rek'Sai here. Well, slow and steady. Gragas is up. We do, in fact, see the Rise taken off the table, so junglers still available, mid laners still untouched, top laners a lot available in the pool. Both of these teams really using the time to the best of their ability. Now, if you're wondering why there's only a 3% ban rate of uh, Alistar hits, because it's based on the entirety of 2015, not just uh, the summer split where it's very prevalent. So a lot of games have been played. Alistar hasn't always been that top pick was very niche actually quite a while ago, but somehow that Unbreakable will find some way to get back into the game every time now. I remember Alistair Top not too long not ago. Too long. Well, Worlds. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite a while. Not too long. We're, Depends we're, how you look at it. We're in the 2015 season. It's been a long time. But this is the first time I've seen bands taking this long, Crepo, in, in the summer split. Gragas is off the table. One pick remaining for Origin. Yeah, and definitely that vital third band here, but. SK Gaming on blue side have to ban the Rise themselves. Uh, could have maybe waited one rotation with that ban, but they like to have both teams like to have a reactionary third ban, right? So they can plan out what's going to happen here. Rek'Sai is out, Gragas is out, and I think this is good for Svenskren because he refused to play those champions anyways. So he has trained himself in the ways of not playing those two champions, so he might be a step ahead here. Uh, let's see what Amazing does. Did play Evelyn last week as well. A little bit of a, a routing issue, but overall, solid performance. I've definitely got my eyes on Sven. His Lee Sin went 0-4-1. Considering how well Sven's going to perform the Lee Sin in the World Championship group stage. Mid laners, with the exception of LeBlanc available. Azia's there, Cassio's up. Morgana's still on the table. Peke ran it last week. I mean, these teams are really, really using absolutely all the time. We are on 5.10. We are on 5.10 and Echo's not, the only champion that's not available because he's too new. Yeah, definitely. Evelyn coming out, stealing it away from Amazing since he played it last week. A more a more meta pick that we coming out from uh, from Svenskan here is generally picked in, in third succession. Uh, Gragas 1, Rek'Sai 2, Evelyn 3. Uh, usually, Origin will likely react with a Sejuani counter pick unless uh, the Volibear has inspired Amazing. <laughs> Given history, I doubt it, but one would never know. Thresh, is that locked already? I think it is locked in. That's what it looks like. So a lot of time for SK to prepare for that Thresh. And take note that Soez played Rumble in both of the games last week. Pretty good stats overall. 5-5-21. Five, five, a lot of assists on those equalizers. It is available, but as is Maokai, as is Gnar. However, Origin are going to go for the top lane pick. Take my job here, quick shot. With the use of statistics, and I love it because history tends to repeat itself. You predicted two of the first bands, you predicted the rumble. What is SK going <laughs> to reply with? Oh, uh, that's not fair. That's not fair at all. We know they've got their jungler locked in. We know they, there's no threat on the support, Crepo. Mm -hmm. So if you were SK, I would. I don't know, my, my question is now mid lane. That's, that's my real interesting one this game because, with the exception of LeBlanc, who are they going to put where? Yeah, so I've. I've I've said this before, if you're expected to be able to get counterpicked on mid lane anyways, on last rotation, then it might be wise to reveal it here anyways already. In addition to that, add your support because you match what Origin has uh, given away in terms of cards on the table, and that will net you one counterpick on the boost side, and then eventually um, you'll, you'll get one more counterpick on the side of Origin right here. So we see the Kalista locked in. So another approach you can take, get a priority pick instead of uh, just getting a, a random support pick that they can't steal anymore. So Kalista coming in. We saw Bart Kalista last week work relatively well. Um, Azir is one of the mobile mid laners left. If Origin goes for Cassiopeia, Bart punishes that incredibly hard. So let's see what Peke comes up with. And also important to note if memory serves, SK locked in the Bard as the final pick. Yes, it was. So they look through all of the options available before opting to go in. There's a lot of squishy champions on the side of SK. A lot of mobility, so we'll see whether or not Soas can hit effective equalizers, considering almost everybody can hop, skip, or jump in one form or another. Yep, definitely. So any 
Any ranged champion will synergize well with Kalista uh, in the sense that their passive can proc a lot and could work against the likes of a tanky Urgot. Urgot doesn't really build that much HP when he gets tanky because he goes for the Frozen Heart. Getting a raw uh, percentual damage won't be as strong then because less HP, more armor stats, not as efficient. That's why Urgot uh, generally likes to be picked into the Kalista as well. Matchup goes pretty even uh, depending on the sports up uh, plays. Hovering on Annie here. Mixed success uh, from Unrated last split, but definitely a good engage tool. Able to punish Thresh, able to punish Urgot. Hasn't played it yet this split. As we said, the Bard we've touched on, as we said, the Alistair we've already talked about. Champion that original leaving for final pick is going to be that mid laner, which is pretty standard when you're on that red side. We know they're coming up against Azir, and we've seen Cassio a couple of times. SK, 20 seconds left on the clock. This is going to be the longest pick and ban all day long. What flavor of team composition will they round out? We're looking for a top laner for Freddy and a support for Enrated. Nautilus Kalista. I like that more. I think we need our tank opponent in SK's side right here. Evelyn, as said before, can't go on her own. If she has to be the one engaging the fights, not that good. She has to be able to flank. And if there's one target that can draw a lot of damage, survive for quite a while, Steve has shown it before, it is the Maokai. Uh, hovering in the front line, buying enough time for Svenskring to get that flank off on the Evelyn. Second or third tank component coming out here on Nautilus. He can play a little more aggressive than the usual Nautilus can because of Fate's Call. Pulling him back, so we have a double threat composition with Azir uh, going for the late game carry and Kalista doing the early game damage, unless obviously she gets rolling like she did last game. Well, we'll have to find out because despite getting rolling last game, it still wasn't enough for SK. Fnatic were able to bounce back. Now, if memory serves, so Froggen played Vlad into Azir yes. in week one, and that actually went very well I like for it. Elements. Let's see if Pekka decides to lock it in. I think this would be a nice pick to run at this composition. I was wondering what can supplement the Sejuani engage ulti. You know, what can you pile on top of that, on top of the equalizer to make it all work into an Azir? Vladimir sounds like a good pick because Froggen, when he played it into the Azir, yes, he got pushed in, but he managed to survive, sustain against the poke that Azir re repetitively puts down. Unless or Origin gets done to them what they did yet last week, which is repeated ganks to counter that sustain, like they did against the Kassadin last week. Vladimir can also uh, pull under Azir while he costs his ultimate and basically get to the other side of the fight and does do a lot of damage. Azir is relatively squishy. He has a lot of appeal, a lot of mobility, but he dies relatively quick if you can get on top of him. And that's why likely Pekki opted for that Vladimir. So we do see the team compositions locked in, doing very different things. And also interesting to see where the tankiness comes from. From SK, it's the top and support primarily. From Origin, you could argue jungle and AD carry, but Vladimir is going to become difficult to kill as the game progresses and all of his tools of survivability. So. Team fights, I feel, are going to be very exciting once we get to them in the later stages of the game, Crepo. Interesting team comps, and again, different things. Uh, I think for Origin, more than SK, a different set of champions, a different style of play from what we saw last week. Yeah, and I wonder if we're going to see a lane swap, because it, it'll dictate how this game uh, will end up being played out, and what both teams will have as objectives, which carries are going to shine if you get a lot of farm on the Rumble. He gets going. We saw Otto Wamna get going without that much farm because he got a lot of kills. At the same time, Rumble operates very well on a low amount of farm. Has a really good level 6 spike regardless whether he has items or not. Maokai generally wants to get tanky, soak up a lot of damage because there's quite a lot of damage on the Origin side. There are tons of damage, I feel, from both of these respective sides. You can see the team comps on your screens, guys, for the fourth time today. Let us know on Twitter, at LOL Esports. Hashtag OG win if you believe in the newcomers of Origin, or hashtag SKWIN. As we load up onto the Rift, SK Gaming looking for their first victory in the summer split. And I'm hearing some Origin chants from the audience. A lot of fans, and you know, we, we talked about, uh, I talked about on PTL last night, the expectations on these teams. And I felt coming into the split, Origin had a better setup to be the stronger team. And we'll need to see whether they can actually prove that against SK, who obviously had their uh, speed bumps in week one. SK definitely had the speed bumps, but let's not forget they're a very experienced team. We saw the stat line earlier in the introduction, 999 assists for Unrated. So I will be keeping my party hat ready because I think he'll hit 1,000 in this game. I think it's a safe bet. 
with a Nautilus that's going to be lobbed in from Fate's Call. Let's take a look. Nautilus, I choose you. <laughs> we take a look at the early warding pattern. Defensive starts from both teams. Uh, no wards really beyond the river from respective opponents. And Narrated and Candy Panda setting themselves up for a potential invade, but... I really like this bot lane matchup uh, in a sense because it, it, it shifts the way it's played when people can get a camp or not. If both, both teams get a camp, the lane is actually played a lot different. Whereas if you don't get any experience due to the, the proximity to level 2 spike, but sadly, you will not see it played out because as we thought, there's a lane swap coming out because Rumble, double jungle is relatively well and operates well on low farm. Also, this removes the, the threat of uh, Evelyn coming top early, having that twisted advance. And we saw how potent that early gang timing is and Huni fell victim to it. He did come back a little later uh, in that game. But let's get back to this game, Trevor. All right, well, we are back in this game. The lane swap has, in fact, taken place. Niels and Mithy up top. Mithy with the ward in the jungle, and Freddy has made his way back to lane. We know he loves his farm and experience. Yeah, this is the signature SK lane swap that I would have liked to see changed because I think there's a way to uh, abuse this. SK likes soaking up XP, so we'll see Origin likely react with a four-man top dive. Well, we'll find out whether or not they can make it work out. Multiple times in the spring split, I recall Freddy being punished for being greedy for CS, and we'll see if uh, he's put himself in a similar position. I might be wrong here, because he was sapling farming. Uh, the lane started in a neutral state. A small camp was started, I believe, at least by Miffy on Thresh. Not quite sure, but the lane was in a neutral state, and then the saplings came in. Yes, you get the CS, but you push it backwards, and now Niels will be able to freeze. However, Freddy is still leeching experience. It's incredibly hard as Thresh to zone somebody out, especially without getting minion aggro. Svenskren? Clearing the jungle on his own, so going lower. Whereas uh, Amazing is getting help from Soas. So was not opting to teleport bottom. The wave's already bounced. Interesting. Interesting indeed, Crepo. We'll have to see. Quite how the peculiar case there, Watson. The game is uh, fun to see. Soas is still holding Amazing's hand. Obviously, the wave has not yet hit his tower. You can see Candy Panda alone in the bottom lane and rated with an early roam at middle. Pekka with Ghost Flash. Level 3, so we should have access to Sanguine Pool. No, I wouldn't. Really gonna be an easy top. I would have liked to see Unrated Base and help Freddy out in the top lane. Because he backed out from bottom and they know he's missing. Well, I think he has it. the pool and the summoners, but it's unlikely that he'll die. Yes, he might blow some summoners. Yes, he may not blow some summoners. It got the Sanguine Pool on cooldown, so. Nothing really gained from that one. Freddy Did smelling the gang to a very patterned play by both teams here. Once the support start roaming, the gank is pretty obvious. Is Freddy going to lose any experience here? We said this before. Lane swaps, there is a hidden stat you have to track, and that is the experience on which carries he goes, and more importantly, on which carries he goes not. So as did the jungle here, is level 2 as well. Amazing is relatively a bit behind against Svenskren. This is what something we'll have to watch out for if this manifests itself. Other than that, the experience just should be roughly equal. A side edge on Candy Panda against Niels with the going in. Oh, Amazing has jumped in. This is a 3v3. Amazing forced to back away. Now we do see Niels and Mithy. They're still alive as they manage to get through the tri-bush. Svensko and Raid continue to chase. Soaz is using the teleport to get away from Kalista. Sven's going low, and Niels is on the board once again for Origin. Soaz is teleported in. He's got no assist, and we'll need to see if Origin can take the tower. Because what is the cost? But first blood, Again, to the newcomers in the league. Very, very interesting how this played out. Yes, Soaz did not get an assist, but it was the zoning teleport. He came in, scared the backline in from joining the fight, kneels aggressively. That ignite from Miffy got Svenskren low enough. Evelyn is quite squishy in the early game, and Niels, look at that. He picked up a blue buff, and this will wow. facilitate the poke. Dredge line almost connects, and Raider does in fact join Freddy in the top lane. Do you even want that dredge lane to connect? I don't even know. <laughs> At this point, Svenskren level 3, he got... So any any experience loss on Origin side <laughs> quickly got turned around. Now they can zone Freddy. He's not going to touch too much farm because there's a distinct all-in potential. They do have teleport advantage. Let's see if they can use that to dive Soas potentially on a bot lane. Well, we'll find out. Instead, nope. Freddy's opting again to get up to the top lane. You touch Back on into the, the freeze. The difference here between the lane freeze and who's getting XP. Amazing, marginally behind Svenskren, but with the assist, and some free time. He's actually pulled ahead. Soaz, on the other hand, is now the man that's hurting just a little. He is even on levels with Freddy. And he's got a solo lane to farm up along with Candy Panda. 
And while all that's going on, the mid laners continue to CS and abashed. Aggressive pink ward from Amazing there. They definitely want to prevent SK from pushing in that lane on the top lane and resetting it. Anala's Maokai doesn't do all too well as a two-man laning phase because neither of them are ranged. Saplings have too much wave influence. And at the same time, Kalista 1v1s beautifully into a rumble, especially with an experienced lead. And Teke is, uh, as you said earlier, using a sustain to stay bang on even. And his tower is still at 95%. And that's, that's, that will be the turning point if Fox can whittle down this tower in the meanwhile. But it doesn't quite look like that. Yeah. Origin, good start. Again, another strong performance out the gates. You know, Shock's touched on the analyst desk. Origin is 2-0. They've got the shortest average game time. They had very convincing wins last week. We'll need to see if they can accelerate as quickly. They've got some champions that do need some time in the Vladimir and the Urgot and even the Sejuani in some places. But I feel their comp has got a fairly nice gradual curve. Now, usually when, when you lane swap and you fall behind in levels as a support, you have to play relatively passive. But once you re-enter that lane with your AD carry that is Kalista, you still have the option to play aggressive due to Fate's call because you can get pulled back in every time. So that is a little, a little nice interaction that you have there. You don't have your ultimate, you don't have high levels, but you have the option to play aggressive because Fate calls can potentially save you. Well, Freddy finally left the top lane looking for a... Looking for Peke. Level 4 Maokai. The lane swap definitely working uh, for Origin here. The main tank from SK is not that tanky. Definitely not, but eventually trees will grow and eventually they will get tanky. So let's see whether or not SK can play the long game. They've started themselves off the dragon. They have the numbers advantage in this half of the map. Origin not going to respond to this at all. You have to assume they know because they know. absolutely nobody's showing. But an early dragon here for SK Gaming. And Origin maybe, maybe pushing top lane. Yeah, Origin looking for the counter tower, but at the same time, bot lane has a four-man presence from SK Gaming. They might as well take a tower two and trade tower and dragon for tower. So we'll be seeing if Origin can pick up anything else here or just an experience lead altogether. But yeah, Freddy, can get any minions. Looking for some water in that river to grow to a mighty fine tree. <laughs> we did catch a quick glimpse of Amazing stealing away the blue buff there from SK Gaming. I didn't catch whether or not it had been uh, equalized by SK. I don't believe so, but something Crepa you keep talking about in these lane swap scenarios. Each team in control of one half of the map. But it looks like Origin getting more damage. I mean, Higher advantage, they stole the blue and they're on the inner turrets. Yeah, so they stole, they traded blue and tower for dragon and tower, and they want to get some damage on tier two. Usually this tier two tower doesn't fall in these scenarios, especially not against a very weak seizure like uh, Urgot and Thresh. So in terms of objective worth, yeah, a little bit on, on SK side for sure. Origin is still ahead in the lead. They may have gotten some more XP. I didn't quite track the waves too well there. We're scaling into a very explosive mid-game, I feel. Both teams are, are mid-game focused. Uh, Slider Edge. I don't even know who has the edge in late game. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of these teams you know, have factors that speak forward, but I think mid-game is definitely where we're going to see a lot of action. I certainly hope so, because we're hitting 10 minutes. One kill to Origin, one Dragon to SK. Even on towers and a thousand gold separates the teams. I quickly want to highlight the mini-map. We did see Origin getting some deep wards down in the top half of the map. And actually, these two teams are not particularly strong in the vision game, Crepo. Ranked 6th for SK, 7th for Origin when it comes to wards uh, placed across the map. So we'll need to see whether or not that comes into effect. A lot of flanks could determine these team fights, especially if Sejuani gets a good place for prison. So, Sven Skjern has a backup of Inrated on this invade. He'll move himself into the jungle. And now it looks like the respective halves of control have swapped. Origin have said, uh, we would like the bottom half back. And they've booted SK out. Yeah, brute forcing here. No teleport to help Freddy because he is the one with the teleport spell. Always, if you want to split up the, the enemy team, just engage on the teleporter because he can't assist the other side of the map. If you go to the other side of the map and you try to brute force him, something there, Freddy can always zone in and that leaves usually your, your AD carry exposed at, at the bottom line. This is why these teams usually go for these mirror plays because otherwise teleport advantage is quite big. So as doing equalizer for stall, Svenska's going in. Wow, Svenska has almost soloed him out. There's no equalizer for Soaz yet. Tower secured for Origin on the bottom lane, and Minion Wave's making its way up top. So Soaz 
down on CS, but his tower's still alive for a few minutes longer. Yeah, they were, they were wave behind. SK is a wave behind right now. Can Origin capitalize? And I don't think they want it just yet, Crepo. The rest of the team is moving up to the middle, in fact. Flash is available. The dash as well. If amazing connects with that Glacial Prison. Fox is in trouble. Fox, that's so, so close. But the death sentence! So close. But very, very slight. Fox does not get caught. And yeah, this was the chance for Origin to even out that place. So Soa started that in the top lane by slowing that minion wave down. Origin was ahead of the tempo, managed to go mid, and had an opportunity to snowball. SK denied that opportunity, and now we're bang on even again. So let's take a quick look at the situation. Two to two on towers. Origin unable to secure that gank. We do see Soaz, 20 CS down. But he's not a champion that doesn't necessarily need the farm. Well, eventually he does. Eventually, but he's happy enough with his ultimate. For now, four sweepers on the side of Origin. Not something you see every day or in many games. Let's see if they can deny vision. As we do see Pekka, he's about to get surrounded. Spinscare does not have Agony's embrace. He's knocked backwards. We do see the Sanguine coming out. And oh, it's saved by Miffy. Great save by Miffy, but I feel like Pekka could have used the Sanguine pool a little early, as we said earlier. Once the animation starts, you want to duck under that wall, get out of there. Good save, but that was a little bit too close to where. Close for comfort. Pekka does manage to stay alive to fight one more day. Origin looking to looking to find another objective. You can see Soa shoved out the top wave. Pekka seems to be meeting the bottom wave. Origin have set their duo around the mid to top half of the map. Now, if I would just look at these lineups separately, not against each other, I would say both lineups are fantastic at controlling dragons. They want to fight around a dragon. They want to get the Maokai in with the E-Flying, Azir in the mid game. Kalista in the mid game has a, a good impact, but at the same time, when you run Equalizer, Sejuani ulti, you want to either dive towers or get a dragon. And it looks like diving towers indeed. Fox is going to get swapped backwards, but he throws himself away. He's still alive for a few seconds longer, and the prison snipes him from downtown. Strange Scare is the next target, is amazing. Flashes forward. Now we're rated, still looking for his 1,000th assist. Is yet to get on the board. Amazing now, in and amidst the chaos. Soez hiding on the flanks as Mithy is knocked up by the mine. We do see the kill on the board here for Candy Panda, and in rated is there with 1,000 regular season assists, but it's Origin that come out in the better. One for three in that mid lane tower dive. Yeah, not too many party hats on SK's side. That cake's gonna taste a little sour while he picks up one assist. His team gives up three kills and Origin extending their lead to 2,000 gold right now. Small gains, that's what it's all about here for Origin. Continue to carry the weight of the team. An amazing. 2-1-2. Two, two. I've, actually, I've not actually seen the Glacial Prison to snipe someone. I think that's uh, a little high five that needs to be given to him. Yeah, that was a pretty good um, you know, sniper kill there from Amazing, and he still did a lot in the fight. Usually you'd say he used his ulti to kill a low HP target, not that good. Pekka gets caught here a little bit. And Mithy saves him again, but Freddy Freddy follows all the way through. He eats a death sentence for his troubles. <laughs> As the Twisted advance almost put him behind enemy lines. Dragon is up. Origin are not grouped effectively enough. And against a Kalista, you have to feel this is going to SK Gaming. Is in fact secured there by the Ren. Origin looking for the team fight. Death Sentence goes wide. There's no flash for Freddy. He's going to be the sacrificial lamb for the Dragon. Stalling it out as long as he can. Not even going to give up anything further. So Origin with their fifth kill of the game. And they're still chasing Crepo. More action in the jungle. Oh, they're sent to save. Glacial Prison connects on Candy Panda. Nobody else from Origin wants to follow up. Soez is held onto his equalizer. And this has gotten a little bit awkward now. Fox and Sven are slowed. But again, nobody can catch up. Pekka is trying to chase. And Honestly, this is just a little bit of a weird passage of play. Origin trying to eke out an advantage or trying to find an angle for a team fight, and they were unable to do so. Yeah, they realized they were the stronger team 5v5 once they had all their members, and they didn't make the mistake that a lot of teams do. They didn't. They waited for Niels to get to that fight. They wanted to fight on 
even numbers. If that meant they had to sacrifice the dragon, sure. Miffy tried to get the hook there on Freddy and kill him. Freddy juked the hook, but juked into the pit. And we saw that Origin was tracking cooldowns. How do we see that? Because they didn't all greet for that Maokai kill. They kept one or two members in the pit. They, they knew he didn't have any flash, so there, was any, there wasn't any pressure to take him down. So some of the members of Origin already started rotating toward the mid lane, and they were trying to stay one step ahead uh, of SK Gaming right there. So very smart play from Origin, heads up. Making Lost sure the they don't give up uh, more than they need to. The thing is, though, when you watch um, some of the European teams, and actually this is something that we talk about when we watch LPL teams, it almost feels like when a dragon is available, a team fight will happen. Like, regardless of the scenario, regardless of the setup, it's like, look, dragon's going down, you've got to fight for this. Uh, fight alarm. I have got a, a quick note from production. We will have a client restart to solve one of the problems. I believe it's on Neil's side, as we can see. But I want to step back from sort of the story of the game, Crepo, and just look a little more specifically. We're 15 minutes in. Freddy has got 60 CS. Soaz has got 42. Even in a lane swap scenario, those are pretty low numbers at this stage in the game, considering how the swap played out, and obviously Origin being in the lead. It seems to be in favor of uh, the newest LCS team. Yeah, Origin is quite all right with that, as long as the remaining members of their team get enough CS, and at the same time do something efficient with that, and they won the fights, the crucial fights. The game was even in terms of what happened on the map tempo-wise, but then the, once the fights started happening, Origin came out on top, and then they're all right with that. Because the reason these CS numbers are so low is because due to the way the game played out, these top laners always found themselves outnumbered in the lanes, had to back up. Remember that situation where Soaza was forced to use his equalizer just to clear a wave, and then back up on the towers. So, Teams take two towers on one side, they switch it back up to the other side. And who, who is always the, the poor little sheep <laughs> sent to defend those towers? Who do we send? Not our carry or in the bottom, not our carry in the mid lane, but the poor old top laners that just like the opportunity to play some League of Legends. And it does look like Soros is going to get that opportunity. Eventually. Despite being down in CS, you can see the gold numbers there. Thank you, observers. Uh, actually, even. Thanks, of course, to the kill, the assist, and the additional tower sitting in his hands. Big, big difference between the junglers. 3,800 to 5,100. And then mostly even across the board. 600-odd gold in favor of Mithy. But again, it's still, it's a, it's a relatively small gold lead. 2,015 minutes, and the tempo of the game is very, very slow. I believe we do actually have a replay of Amazing Sichuani Ultimate. This it might be the snipe. We'll find out when we pull that up onto your screen in a moment. And it's actually yeah, going to be the whole team fight. Hook, hook initiated from Miffy is good. Next CC from Fox prevents him from using any abilities. He goes all has to flash out. And yeah, amazing ops to not help his team. He wants a <laughs> glory. He wants that stat pad KDA. Then dashes on Svenskun. And, and something I wanted to point out, Svenskun has been dying a lot recently. Last week, if we recall, on his Nidalee as this fight plays out, you see how tanky amazing already is. He's more tanky than Freddy at this point. Or there's just more damage coming out on Origin side. But I really want to stress that amazing hasn't quite had the impact that many people were predicting for him, because he, he was a fantastic jungler, but lately he, either he's not in sync with his team, he doesn't get the backup he feels he needs, but he's been dying a lot on his Nidalee game last week. He was clearing a lot of wards. That's one stat we had for him. I think he had yep. by far the most wards cleared, but he paid the iron price for it sometimes. He, he, that's actually the wrong reference, but anyways, he died a lot <laughs> in pro process. So, yeah, and, and I mean, 0-2-1 on Evelyn Svenskir in this game, um, he needs to find his groove, I think. You know, when, when we were in the earlier stages of the year and early game junglers were a lot more impactful, Sven was still very, yeah. very relevant. It feels like as the game has progressed to the more mid to late game junglers in many ways, Sven is not necessarily adapting quite as heavily. Very quickly, I just want to touch on that replay before we move on. That was, of course, the kill. Candy Panda secured the 1,000th assist for N rated. It says a lot that he's been playing in so many LCS games to have accrued a thousand of anything. There's very few players that can add that sort of accomplishment under their belt. So props to Enrated for that. Yeah, that is fantastic stat. Not to be underestimated. It shows the, the longevity of his career. Um, I went looking for mine, and I wasn't even close. And I uh, had to call it quits after that one. There's a lot of fans in the audience. There's the still audience. some fans out there. <laughs> Thank you, guys. But yeah, a thousand is, woo! Let's go. Just let that, let that, let that sink in for a moment. It's fair, deserved. Right. It's, it's deserved. It's great to have you on the cast today. I've had the pleasure of working with you on the analyst desk multiple shows. So, 
That's that's nice. But I do want to touch oh, on it's again. Nice. Once the camera's on, everybody's nice. <laughs> we do have we do have Niels. He has rejoined the game. The uh, uh, QA guys on stage are still looking into the problem. So we'll give you an update as soon as we get one um, from the production team. But yeah, five to one. Uh, we should hopefully be jumping back into game. For Origin, this is a team that, again, we talked on expectations. There's a lot of people who believe they're going to make it to Worlds. And it was interesting to me hearing the players sort of sit and go, ooh, we've just got to take each game at a time, get to playoffs, then we'll try our hardest in playoffs. It's not the same bravado yeah, yeah, that we'd heard coming from certain players last year. Yeah, but you don't want to be that guy that comes in and says, hey guys, we're new to the LCS. Uh, yes, of course we're aiming for Worlds. Uh, championship points, who needs that? We're going to win this split. Because then, if it goes wrong, you get called out for the Origin well on their way to do well. Let's not yes, get too ahead of ourselves. They're doing great, they're doing fantastic. Uh, looks like we're about to head back into game soonish as I uh, get word for production that the bugs almost fixed. And yeah, can't wait for a fantastic game. Well, we'll we will find out. It's and game, they actually repaused the game. Game three of 18. <laughs> game three of 18. So yes, it is very soon to be getting excited. As I said, uh, this is a problem with Neil's client. So the guys are looking into it. Now, earlier... I told you that I wasn't quite sure which team had the better late game, and I need some time to think. Thankfully, I had some time to think, and I, I would actually give it to, uh, to Origin. What, what, uh, what speaks in favor for them? Oh. Okay, so this is, tattoo. that is awesome. As a tattoo connoisseur, I, I think that is phenomenal. I like that. Not only League of Legends, is that a Squirtle in there? Yeah, Squirtle is Charmander up on top. A little bit of where uh, is poor Bulbasaur? Mario, Mario. Every time, <laughs> every time they forget him. Poor little Bulbasaur. Oh, well, let's uh, let's go on with League so, of Legends right now. Back on topic. Uh, yes. We were talking late game origin team so, composition. What what spoken in, in favor of this late game is obviously Sijuani, fantastic team fight late game. Vladimir, fantastic team fight late game. Rumble, eventually he'll get items. Good in the late game, more of a mid game champion, but does a lot of damage and has some CC components. What Initially, on first glance, speaks against is that Ur Urgot's short range doesn't dish out too much damage. But let's not forget the passive. Minus 15% damage done uh, by an enemy carry is big, and we saw it in the Rocket game. If these fights break down slower and go one for one for one for one, especially since SK is only running a double threat yeah. composition with Azir and Kalista. Kalista, a rumor to fall off a little bit in the late game as well. If it goes late, 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 Origin will uh, likely have the better hand or the upper hand rather, but we're back into game. So there we go, that TLDR. If this goes late, 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 Origin should have the better hand. We'll see if that pans out. Just to give you guys an update, it was a minion HP bar related bug that Niels appears to have resolved considering his last hitting quite effectively. Let's take stock. Origin in the middle lane. Four champions at 16 minutes. Two and a half thousand lead. They want this tower, but they need to deal with the wave clear of Fox's Azir and the incredibly short range of all of their champions. Yeah. Don't even get a single auto attack before they're forced to back away. Yeah, I think, I think, but Origin, look at them. They try it one way. Doesn't work, they back off and they go for a plan B. Whereas as we saw, for example, Copenhagen Wolves last week spent a little bit too much time hammering on that mid lane tower. Uh, side lanes are pushing. Candy Panda looking for some farm in the bot lane. He's still in a good position. 125 CS on him to finish that Bloodthirster first, like he did last week. Had a lot more kills, though, in his, in his namesake last week. That's for sure. Managed to find Fnatic multiple times. And it looked like one more hit. And that tower would have gone down. Pick is thinking about it. He's got Ghost, he's got Flash. Come on, you can sneak in there and hit it and run away. I believe. I think Peck is uh, one patient man. It's not worth backdooring the middle tower, right? It's not quite the hype you're looking not for. <laughs> no, not this time around, I'm afraid. But as you said, as long as Fox's sand soldiers are around. Uh, oh, 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 we just oh, hit the tower. Oh, he can the Did he get it off or was it just not enough damage? I didn't even know, Trev. Too soon. Uh, you know, I expected more of a former world champion. Thwarted by an outer turret. Look at Soas finally getting that juicy farm he was looking for. Took him a while. Just wants to get out. Oh, no, Soas. Let one die. Still down. 61 to 85. Oh. Let's get himself a couple of those minis. Not the uh, greatest All of accuracy. Them. But Kreppo, I do have to highlight. Amazing. Has grabbed himself in early ages of the Legion. Love it. I know that's something you're particularly fond of. Have been for a very long time. I mean, look at it. it 
Nope, no fight happening here. Hook's going wide. If you look at the magic damage coming out from Maokai, Azir, Evelyn, and Nautilus, definitely low amounts of damage. And Miffy wants a tower, but Amazing gets it. <laughs> he wants everything. Snipes the kill, gets the tower. He's ready for this game. Uh, amazing is trying to show off today. 100% kill participation. And tower try. participation. And tower participation. And obviously sniping participation. But let's take a look at the situation because Candy Pan is down bottom. He's pushing the inner turret. We do see Dragon not available yet. Two of them have gone to SK. But it's Origin that grouped up in the middle lane. And so is has gone to defend. Teleport's open for both. Yeah, and if SK opts to defend the tower while being outnumbered, you wouldn't be surprised to see Origin just straight up die them. Right now, Soas is on the bottom dealing with Candy Panda. Four man heading Origin squad to the top lane. Teleport's ready. This tower's half HP. SK will have to be careful. Well, it looks like the tower is going to go very, very low. Sven Skaren can potentially engage. Death Sentence does not connect. So tower down to about 20-odd percent HP. And look at Soas in the bottom lane because Candy Panda's retreated. He's recalled. Got that recurve boat. And he's trying to join the rest of his team. But I think, you know, yes, SK got that bottom tower. They gave up a lot of vision and a lot of damage on that top uh, inner turret. So advantage SK for the time being. But it is a matter of time before Origin pull the same move across the map. Yeah, and they're, they're trying to stay one step ahead. Hook goes here on Freddy. No way me to follow. Mythic goes over, though. He does. The box is connected. Sven, as well as Freddy, and amazing connects with a two man glacial prison. And Rayton has now joined the fight as he throws out the mine. It's going to knock up Origin, but it's just not enough to save Freddy's life. And SK Gaming give up two kills for walking through a jungle that truthfully not their jungle. 20 minutes on the clock, and OG have a 4,000 gold. Yeah, and Origin is staying one step ahead. They move to the weak side of the map, for, force SK to group their S5, then move to the mid lane, tell SK, hey, we're moving somewhere. Do you want to follow? Yes, if you do, we might be able to hook you, catch you out, engage on you. Beautiful Glacier Prism from Amazing coming out. Good follow-up, and Origin showing just how much damage there's in their team comp already. Yeah, the amount of assists across the board is so high. Six, you know, Niels has been involved in six kills. Mithy similar. All seven for Amazing. And you look at SK, they've got one kill on the board. Th that's it. They've luckily, however, secured the first two dragons. Yep. So if Origin are unable to contest, maybe SK can play for the late game and look for that fifth dragon counter. It's something they... Still have a long time to go before we get to that point. Now, Equalizer and Glacier Prison are still on cooldown. If SK is tracking this, they might be able to brute force something because they're less reliant on their ultimates and they are relatively shorter cooldown too. Eventual Mace Storm and Fate's Call have low cooldown. I don't think Spencer even had the opportunity to use his ultimate as he got instigate, but he's died three times now this match. Yeah, not looking too great for them. It is not, but what is looking great for Origin is the fan support. 88% of you guys voting on Twitter with that hashtag OG win are believers. Dragon down to 1,000 HP, 800 HP. Who's going to secure it? It looks like it should be amazing. He's got Smite available. He's holding on to it. Death Sentence connects on Fred and the Equalizer splits SK up. We do see the Hemo play coming down and Sven will be popped by that one. Amazing with another kill on the board as Peke gets the first of his own. Emperor's Divide will divide the map and Freddy and Sven Give up two more kills as Origin grab the first dragon. Orange is not doing the dragon. They're basically luring SK in, tangling that bait in front of their eyes. Do you want an SK? How badly do you want it? Walk in and get roasted immediately. Equalizer comes in. Glacier Prison was even held or was still on cooldown. And the sheer amount of damage on this squad is just fantastic. Well, Fox gets caught out by the position reverser. Pekka gets one more kill. And look at those item spikes. Locket, Leandries, Muramana, Black Lever, and there's a bunch of cold gold that they're sitting on to spend. Yeah, and the Locket is finished for added tankiness. Niels is tanky right now. Amazing is tanky. Peke is slippery. We're going in for round three. Well, let's see. And Rated forced to flash away as Freddy's now joined. Miffy puts the box down once more. Another kill on the board to Candy Panda before Freddy gives up his fifth death of the game. Origin trade. Well, it was effectively two for one because Fox was caught out and it looks like a tower. Yeah, we saw Candy Panda in the feature earlier today. 
needed some time to get this roster going. 2 in 1 or 2 0 right now, but the top side of the map for SK Gaming 0 5, as you said on Freddy, 0 4 on Svensker, and combined 9 deaths already. That's a whole lot of deaths, Trevor. Two of the strongest performing members of SK from the spring split. Still trying to find their groove in the summer split. Origin have got themselves 11 kills. They've got themselves a 5,000 gold lead. And look at the assists across the board. And again, amazing. 10 of the 11. I mean, he's played, I believe, three different junglers in three different games. Evelyn Gragas and now Sejuani. You expected the Sejuani in picks and bans. An amazing delivery. He's showing up. Fantastic performance so far. 10 out of 11 kills is huge. That's, that's such a high kill participation for a relatively weak early game jungler. That is Sejuani, and that might prompt it, uh, Origin to do this lane swap too. Just get Sejuani through the early game. Don't, don't give e Evelyn the opportunity to be invisible because in lane swap she has to show her face. She has to help push those towers down and you remove that extra pressure component on SK's side. And We knew before SK's lane swap was relatively predictable. They stopped a bit of the aggression early. They came out somewhat even, but Origin their macro play is, is impressive because they they know when they're into deep. They know when they have to back off. They know when they can't get that mid tower, can't get that top tower. They keep rotating until they find an opening and then they just go. With all the experience we're talking about in Rated, you're looking at Peke and So as you've been playing since season one. Amazing. And Mithy, who've also played and on world stages as well. It's very difficult to find another team with that level of pedigree and experience over multiple years of competition with multiple countries as well. Yeah, and Origin is feeling safe enough to fan out relatively far from each other. And this forces SK to stay on the right side of the map. Baron is a bit of a threat. SK has to take the, the safe path to get to that bottom tower, so it takes very long. The tower finally drops. Look at the amount of pink wards coming out from Origin. You said earlier they don't ward out too much, but what they do ward, they do quite efficient, if I may add. And I'm really a fan of how Origin have They've taken them three rotations top to get the tower, but all three times has been safe and secure. In the previous attempt, Origin bagged themselves two more kills out of the deal as well. Yeah, There's we'll SK's vision, though. SK wants that bot lane wave to hit to force at least somebody from Origin back to show his face to make it less likely that Baron's being started. Obviously, Soas will go with the teleport. Amazing is still in the pit. <laughs> You'll see me, here we go! He's got a three-man Glacial Prison! Origin and I'm looking for another team fight as Freddy has managed to zone away Origin. But a long-range Acid Hunter secures another kill for Niels. And so is his teleported in. He's put the Equalizer down, he's got himself a double kill. He's burning them down as Niels gets a double of his own. And Fox is set to retreat. Origin get themselves four kills. And amazing once again with a phenomenal engage. I love what Origin did. They showed a couple of members. So us in the bot lane. Somebody else on the right side. They thought the pit was clear. Somebody was going to ward it. But oh. amazing comes out with the Glacier Prezi. Miffy drops here. Is this Baron going to go to escape? Well, let's find out. It's only Fox left. Fox is in trouble and he's down. The answer is no. Baron is up. Amazing. He's going to join on the Baron play. And so as very close. Calculated. Calculated indeed. Only does he like his baguettes. He's also very good at math. <laughs> yeah, they're walking, they're walking in and they want to get that ward in the pit, but beautiful glitch of prison. Three man. And SK is forced to use all their offensive tools defensively. And Rated goes in triple knocker, but what does it accomplish at this point? Your carries are already dead. Fox can't join the fray. He's zoned down. He has to back out. Eventually trades his life um, for Miffies. Not quite a hashtag worth. You ask me, and three kills on SK side. 16 for Origin. Well, day and night between these teams. Finn and Inrated, they think they've got one up. They do catch Neil. Finn is now putting damage down. But look again, another long range twisted advance. And this has brought enough space for Pekka to join the fight. Mithy and Niels get one more kill onto Sven Skir. And the equalizer went down south as Freddy is being chased down. Soez is going to get the burning kill onto Inrated, and Freddy is left to fight against all of Origin. And it's just a matter of time before four more members go down. And Origin. SK is doing their darndest best to reduce that kill participation from Amazing. They're running one guy to the left, one guy to the top, and one guy to the bottom. It doesn't matter where you go, Origin will find you. And if they don't find you, they'll just go to your base and kill those towers. 
Baron buff minions right now. Azir will have an impossible time clearing his wave, and this tower is very likely going down. Well, tower below 30% HP. SK have respawned. Do they want round number seven? It's not worked in the previous fights, and with a 13,000 gold deficit, I don't think team fights are the right way to go. And we went back to these compositions. Then we said early game a little stale due to the lace swap. But the mid game was oh so explosive. But most of the dynamite found itself on SK's side. Blew up in their face and couldn't quite get on top of that one. Origin now, 20 kills to three. Oof. Very reminiscent in a sense to the Gambit Elements game. However, more equally traded towers here. But we see the added tankiness coming in. Amazing is tanky. Soaz has some of the shields. Niels has some of the shields and the tankiness from Urgot. Peke is pretty much untouchable and Miffy will be the only one um, in the fray here. Ready to get popped. Well, Miffy does get caught out. He's put the box down. Peke has thrown out the Hemo Plague. It's been scared and it gets dropped. We do see the Emperor's Divide knocking everyone around. It's enough to get a kill on Peke, but not enough for anything more. Fox gets swapped into the rest of Origin. Four more members down. Niels is continuing to chase. As the Hunter's not connecting yet. A third Good one misses. Like the Panda. auto attacks are not. Amazing. Looks for a further kill. He's going to need to back away. As Candy Panda survives the team fight, but Baron still being used. Origin in great position. Yeah, as many skill shots as Candy Panda can dodge, eventually you'll have to hop away from the boar on Amazing. Just can't quite get in reach, and SK just doesn't even have the time to do any damage because there's mem their members drop instantly as Origin dives in. Glacier Prison, Hemo Plague on top of that. Miffy starts a fight with a good box equalizer. You gotta stand still to do damage, and when you stand still, you just get burned alive and brutal fight. Watch that equalizer. Fenskren, I think he gets one haste spike, one ulti off, and he's dead. Empress Divide, zoning a little bit, but not enough. Doesn't matter where he casts it. Any, any, any direction at this point where he does it, any distance, is not enough because nobody cares about that tower. Amazing will just tank it for days. Origin now, looking to close the game out. 30 minutes is about to breach. Peke was already survivable, he's got himself an hourglass. Time is ticking. Let's see how Origin decides to close the game up. Baron has worn off, but just the, the sheer lead they have is exquisite to watch. And for SK, you know, we do see them jumping on Peke. Peke's got that hourglass. He's going to get run down here by Sven Skier. Yes, on yes. He's going to be able to get a little bit of sustain back. Hourglass is not even going to get used as Pekka goes down. A small little mistake, but Niels may be able to close this one out. He's found Fox. Fox does the little shuffle dash sideways. Not going to be enough to survive. Amazing. One on two. He's thrown down the Glacial Prison to stun up SK. Freddy and Enrated on retreat. Enrated pulled up by the Fate Call. And he throws himself back in. So has knocked up, but so has will burn down Freddy as Niels. It gets the kill credit. Gets himself another double kill. Yeah, this reminds me exactly of the position Gambit was in against Elements. At this point, it doesn't matter how well you place the fights, who you catch, but it'll take you too long to actually finish that one kill that the enemy team will just collapse and kill you in return. And it's such a precarious position to be in because there's almost nothing you can do to come back here. And SK will need a lot of luck, barring a miracle. They have a hard time coming back into this game. Origin looking to close it. Let's see how efficiently they can close it. There's a difference between slowly using that advantage to close the game and doing it in a swift manner, which leaves no comeback potential for their opponents. Something that Fnatic learned a hard lesson on in Spring Split. Trying to close hastily when an opportunity presented itself, and Fnatic would lose to those magically tanky Nexuses. Nexi, whatever the plural is. And we'll see whether or not Origin wait for the next Baron. It's a minute and a half away. Yep. That would be the uber safe thing to do. Well, it wouldn't necessarily be the safe, the uber safe thing to do because either they push right now and they probably won't get to the Nexus. They'll take one hit, get chunked in base, likely. Then go for the Baron and finish. So you might as well skip that part, control the Baron, get it 100% secure, and then go straight for the Nexus into finish because you just get those minion buffs. Your minion waves don't get cleared and you can eventually get to the tower. Whole wealth of options. Uh, but then you can even take the, the more scenic route around Summer's Rift, clear some of those Groms, buffs, dragons, minions, whatever they want. They're in full control of this game. All things considered, Origins team fights have been so good. So has yet to give up a dead. Niels, yet to give up a dead. Yes, they got ahead early and they've been winning the team fights on their terms. 
but that's just so incredible at this level of play. Yeah, we were talking about how Soa is one of the farm minions. We were wrong all the time. He's simply farming champions in this game, involved in 21 out of 27 kills for Origin. Solid performance while he was the, yeah, unlucky in that lane swap, got behind a little early, played it well, though, played it safe, Lantern comes out. And look at that tower, already 30% HP. So one wave here from Origin. Well, pretty big wave built up, let's be fair. They do manage to chunk most of the tower out. SK held on to all of their ultimates except Spin Scarin. So Agony's Embrace is not there. And we see Fred, she's looking for going. They want Lashed over, and another long range. Twisted advance, he's in the middle of three, but he's gonna go down because there's no more support from SK. Good flash by Miffy. Something tells me that play was a little bit telegraphed. Usually when a Maokai storms at you, he's coming for the Twisted Advance. Flash is over, but... Desperate times call for desperate measures, and that's exactly what SK tried, because you have to remember that part of the map is fully dark for them. They're face-checking into nothing, and here, nothing comes to bite them in the ass. And Origin are looking for more kills. Fence Garen's being chunked down from the Acid Hunters. Kneels with another kill. Fox gets one into Mithy, but that simply doesn't matter. Peck is looking for Candy Panda. He's gonna Hourglass, but Rend is still up, and Rend is not enough. Amazing gets himself a double kill to clean up the back end of the fight. And Origin are onto the Baron. And poor Miffy in these long extended fights where people are face checking for vision. Supports are usually the ones to drop because they're the least tanky. When teams get this far behind, they get very bloodthirsty to at least kill one guy on the team uh, to save face. And Miffy is the one that falls. 0 2 and 25, sticking true to the support routes, not getting a kill. Fantastic performance. And Origin looking like a team that works well together. Very high kill participation across the board. They really like working together as a team to group up and, and win these fights. And just in, in the early game, seem to have more of a macro game approach. Spike for that mid game and a fantastic. At this point, Origin should just look to close this game out because it has been painful for a while. And there's 20,000, no, 15,000 gold down. RSK is the second set of Baron minions they need to deal with. I'm still just amazed at how little SK have been able to do to stop Origin's advances and to stop Origin's aggressive play. SK said they needed some time, but if this if this record keeps going this way, if games keep playing out this way, they might run out of time if they ever want to finish in a good spot for playoffs. And this is going to take us back to the original discussion before we got into picks and bands crap, about how expectations were that Origin was going to be very good and SK would need to adapt and learn. If this is the level that Origin is already at, it's fantastic, but it also shows you just how big the deficit is for SK Gaming, how much work they need to pay attention to. So, Mithy has thrown down the box, Freddy's he's caught gone. Freddy and he's thrown him backwards. I think the box was actually proc. Niels is left alone as Sven Skeren and Narrating continue to fight. Freddy still alive. This is the longest he's been alive in a team fight in 30 minutes' time. Niels is going to swap SK around as he gets focused down. Gets knocked out by the Emperor's Divide. And Sven gets the shutdown onto Niels at 12, 1, and 16. SK still alive as Origin have had the messiest team fight they have all game. But they've got such a big deficit to play with. Candy Panda gets another kill before being shut down by Peke. And Origin are actually retreating. This is a little bit messy as it's a two for two and the low health Baron up members of Origin are re-engaging on the next, on the inhibitor rather. Inhibitor turret number two is down and Origin are on the way out. Yeah, very, very sloppy fight on both sides and while we were saying SK is down, impressive five nonetheless to be that far down and play this fight so carefully and dance on the edge of death here. They want a little more. Who comes out to sit advantage dodged? And the Lantern once again. Mithy always where he needs to be. Yeah, SK quite impressive to stay alive that long and dish out that much damage, but you just saw how far ahead Origin was. And let's see what, what goes wrong for Origin to not win this fight. They're engaging on the tank. Something about damage. Niels gets focused. Peke is... Hemo Plague doesn't quite connect. Fox can get out. And Candy Panda, the one carry doing well for SK, is pretty much untouched. Gets swapped, flashes out. Peke can't really get in. And Origin is getting kited, forced across some walls, and SK is using their, their base very well, and the Emperor's Divide. But it's just too little, too late. 
They dodge so much damage. Really impressive fight by Candy Panda, but eventually he finds himself in the midst of the Origin lineup and drops. And if you look at our pip, Dragon being done. We have to go back a few minutes, Krempa, because you know we talked about how at like 30, 31 minutes, Origin broken open the base. We're looking to finish. And we said how efficiently they were going to close. It was not the cleanest of decisions. Nope. It was not the best of decisions when it comes to finishing a game. Small little misstep from Origin. But when you've got such a massive lead, it's a little easier to make. Yeah, it does take two to tango. This game didn't yield. Keep fighting, keep going for this place. No surrender. Freddy's looking for a flank. Starting there in the top, decides against it. To find an opening. Pink wards from, uh, from Origin. They want to be relatively in the dark. I think that's fair what you say, of course, from SK. Never give up, never surrender. Just keep... Keep digging. Maybe Origin will make more mistakes, but we do see that's They're a going lot in of them. speed. They flung Fox in and he's down. He just gets obliterated. His HP melted like a hot knife through butter. Two more kills for Neil. Freddy's pulled backwards. One for Pick and Soez, respectively. And that will be the game. Origin with the heavy rush on the final in here. Yeah, Wombo combo coming in. Mid lane, a lot of minions. Top lane, a lot of minions. Nexus Tower is bleeding down, dropping like flies. And Origin, the crowd agrees. Origin open up the summer split, proving that they are the real deal. They are now three and zero after destroying SK Gaming. Ever favorite high five hug. But Niels, 14, 1, 18. So us. <laughs> so us, so us, so us. <laughs> Didn't die the entire game. That was the point I was going to make. And then he dies into the fountain. KDA for this match stays the same though. 28. It was 8, 0, and 20. Until the accident. I, I, I mean. Just the, the stat lines are ridiculous. Spiral exponentially almost. It's very rare you see an LCS game like this where a team is so far ahead and pick up so many kills. It begs the question, should the game, end, game have ended earlier if you can get this far ahead? But a win is a win. When you can't uh, take books. towers because you've got melees and ergot, I think it kind of adds to the equation, but I do share the sentiment. Nah, it's, I mean, they were... I think Origin was just having a little bit of fun here and at the expense of SK Gaming. Let's go back to the early game where, where the game was still relatively close. Lane swap started. Um, both teams had a little bit of a mirror play. A little adaptation where Freddy went for his signature. I'm just going to go to top lane and farm. Worked out relatively okay for him. We saw SK send up the backup a little bit too late. But then Origin, they went for that one play, if we recall, where they seemingly engaged at 3v3, but we forgot all about Soas coming with that teleport, making it a 4v3. They picked up Svensker and one of many, many deaths. And makes me wonder if, if SK is going to try and fix that for tomorrow or for next week, because Svenskeren has been dying a lot and it, it relieves so much pressure. If you can find the enemy in the jungle, let alone kill him, makes it easier to play, especially when he's on the likes of Evelyn, who's meant to be like this invisible, pres invisible pressure point. Let's go back to the Feb event interview who said, yeah, my jungle's invisible. That's why Nuketok's not going aggressive on me. He, he doesn't know where my jungler is, and yeah, Spenskern just didn't have the same amount of impact. No, unfortunately not. A lot of hit and miss performances from Evelyn in the summer split yep. thus far. I like tracking as well the itemization. That was the second time that we've seen the Stalker's smite coming out, the blue one. We've seen four of the challenging smites. Uh, and only one of that uh, uh, purple uh, uh, ranger's trailblazer. So interesting to see the itemization. One thing I do want to quickly touch on again, Niels, 14118. For those of you at home, I believe you got about 59 and a half fantasy points. 59 and a half fantasy points in one single game, which is ridiculous. Um, and uh, as a team, Origin now 3-0 just looking fantastic. SK have had different weaknesses in different games. I think that's fair to say. Uh, Origin, on the other hand, have just shown the same level of dominant play on multiple champions. Yeah, fantastic performance by them. And we've said before, everybody beats everybody, but in the end, Fnatic wins. But now that Fnatic has split up, will the real <laughs> Fnatic please stand up? Who's well, going to take it? I believe week four, if that's the theory you want to go with, it'll be Origin versus Fnatic. That's a couple of weeks away. So for now, we're going to throw it over to the analyst to talk about Origin's strong.